Hi, my name is Brian Garibaldi. I'm the Associate Program Director for Bedside Medicine here at the Johns Hopkins Ulcer Medical Residency Program. William Moser said that medicine is learned by the bedside and not in the classroom. Let not your conceptions of disease come from words heard in the lecture room or read from a book. See and then reason and compare and control, but see first. But we know in the modern hospital that trainees spend as little as 12% of their time in direct contact with patients and their families. And this lack of time at the bedside has led to a decline in clinical skills, but also likely contributes to the rise in stress and burnout that we've seen over the past several years, particularly among junior trainees. Here at the Ulster program, we're dedicated to improving the training environment so that we can optimize the time we spend with patients, ensure that all of our trainees have the bedside clinical skills that they're gonna need for practice, but also maximize their professional fulfillment during their training years. In order to reach these goals, we've partnered with several other academic medical institutions including Bayview Manor, um, Stanford University, and the University of Alabama at Birmingham as part of an AMA-sponsored grant called the Reimagining Residency Initiative. Here, our grant is called the Graduate Medical Education Laboratory, and, and during this grant, we're uh, studying over 12 different interventions to try to understand how we can improve the training environment, how we can improve clinical skills, and how we can maximize professional fulfillment and combat uh, uh, burnout and improve work. I wanted to share with you some of those core initiatives that, that we've designed to improve clinical skills and combat burnout as part of the gel study. So in addition to the outstanding bedside clinical skills you'll learn during morning clinical rounds on all of your clinical services, we dedicate 30 minutes every day um, to physical exam teaching on our step down unit. And during these sessions, we re review core skills in bedside observation, physical exam, history taking, as well as point of care technology such as ultrasound. And we demonstrate how those skills aid in the diagnosis of new patients admitted to the hospital, but also how they help manage patients as they navigate their hospital course. During your intern and junior years, you'll participate in a series of simulation exercises designed to improve your ability to respond to life-threatening emergencies in the hospital, uh, including our rapid response team code situations. And finally, the biggest component of our clinical skills training is the APEX clinical skills assessment. This is the assessment of physical examination and communication skills. Now, APEX is modeled after the summative assessment that all UK internal medicine residents need to pass in order to move on in their training. Now, we're not doing this here as a summative assessment. This is a formative activity where our interns examine up to seven real patients who have real physical exam findings, real story on history. And they do that in front of faculty members who themselves had to go through that same process and decide what do we think the patient has, what findings are present, and what should a graduating medical resident be able to elicit during a history and physical examination. The best part about APEX is that after you examine each patient, you'll get real-time, hands-on, targeted feedback from the faculty members who just watched you perform a complete or focused history and physical examination. Um, we're now in our sixth year, and we've even included not only a point-of-care ultrasound station where you can integrate your cardiac physical exam with an ultrasound exam, but we've also incorporated the new telemedicine station recognizing the rise in telehealth and our need to actually shift APEX uh, to a virtual environment during the hype of COVID. But in addition to being able to, to participate in these clinical skills activities, you'll also be able to participate actually in research of, of the GEL initiative. So for example, many of our residents have chosen to wear an RTLS real-time location system tracking badge. And this is actually one of the ways how we understand how we spend our time here in the hospital. Uh, and if you decide to wear one of these badges, you'll actually get a quarterly report that tells you how much time you spend in the patient room, in the hallway, uh, in the physician workroom, and then compare that to your peers who have also decided to wear the badge. Um, you'll also participate um, by filling out monthly surveys, and, and you'll, you'll get compensated to do that, uh, which tell us a little bit about your experience in the training environment, how you feel about your current professional fulfillment, where you are in terms of your wellness and burnout. And the goal is really to use all of this data to design interventions that will improve your clinical skills, get you ready to practice independently when you get residency, but also make sure that we have a training environment that maximizes professional fulfillment. You'll also be able to participate in research. Uh, so for example, many of our residents are looking at data from the APEX clinical skills assessment and looking at ways we can improve the cardiovascular exam and the way that we teach the GI exam, but also looking at the, the importance or the parallels between telemedicine encounters uh, and what we normally get from a, an in-person uh, history and physical encounter in the clinic. We're very much looking forward to working with you during the interview process and, and the interview season. Best of luck um, as you explore your opportunities when you move into internal medicine residency training. And I hope I get to meet you in person here in Baltimore.
Take care.